Hey everyone, it's Desiree, and I am here. I'm going to create five projects, and I say projects because they're not all cards, from the Gina K Designs Sparkle and Shine kit. Um, now, I believe as I'm doing this voiceover, the kit is still ready, and if it is, I will make sure that I link it down below for you. So here are the contents. Now, I do believe when I did go online, uh, one of the colors of the cardstock changed, and I believe that is the Tranquil Teal um, is now craft. So you can see you get two large 6x8 stamp sets. You get a 4x6 six, six stamp set. You get three tag dies and three beautiful snowflake dies. You also get a stencil. And you get four shades of the cardstock. Okay, again, I believe the one color has changed. So I'm just going to cut some cardstock down. So usually what I do when I look at my cardstock and I'm using it in a kit, I, I cut it down into certain shapes. So I'll take an eight and a half by eleven, cut it, um, get two pieces of five and a half by eight and a half, and then I'll cut the five and a half into four and a quarter by five and a half. So I have two front panels and a half panels if I want to make that into a card or if I want to use that for other things. Usually my card bases are a standard A2 size card base, four and a quarter by five and a half, and it's usually a top folding. Um, that is what I lean towards. I fell in love with this huge flourish floral whatever we want to call this image, just absolute first. It's beautiful. It covers so much, but yet not everything on a card panel. So I am using one of those card panels that I cut, and I'm going to be using the Tranquil Teal and the, and I forget the name of that, the Lighter Blue. We'll just call it Lighter Blue. Okay. Um, I don't want to, I don't believe it's called Sea Glass but I don't have that in front of me. Okay. So I used my Gina K white pigment ink. If I'm using, <clears throat> excuse me, white embossing powder, I nine out of 10 will use a white pigment ink underneath. I feel I get better results, better coverage, more solid pretty much. Um, than if I just use a clear ink, it kind of helps. I will stamp this a couple times um, when it comes to this image. And the embossing powder that I'm using is by Recollections. I get it from my local Michael store, uh, Recollections, and it's called Snow. Um, now you could always stamp this twice too. And even if I do two layers of embossing powder, I'll use the pigment ink again to do that. I didn't choose to do this twice. I kind of liked the look Okay, now here comes a technical term. The lack of solidness <laughs> of the image. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's, again, what I'm going to use these for and what I'm creating with them, I'm not worried about it being a solid image. And even if I was doing this for a card front, I still would not worry about it being a solid image. Here's when I worry about my embossing to be a solid image for my sentiments. It drives me crazy. Um, I never, now I have awesome luck with the Recollections embossing powder, the metallics, the gold, the silver, and the copper. I can do that one time. Um, so, and I know I hear other people, you know, they leave the comments, you know, how do you get your embossing powder solid? By that. I find, even if it's a fine detailed sentiment, a very small one, I always win with recollections and I'm not stamping it twice. I stamp it once. Um, so we'll get more into that. I'm kind of going off a tangent. So you can see I use the large die I cut from the colored cardstock and I also went into my stash for some craft cardstock and I stamped two of them as well. Within the stamp set, stamp set that she provided, I can't speak today, there is a to and a from. They are connected. You can cut them to separate them. Um, and I am you going to use the Just For You stamp because I absolutely love her fonts when it comes to some of these sets. So 
I'm going to add some color to the front of my tags. So you could see that I have the craft that was stamped and I've set those aside and I they have been scored up at the top. For the tranquil teal, because that's the color of the cardstock that I know, I am going around with my white pigment ink. For the lighter that I believe is sea glass or ocean mist, could be one of those, I'm coming in with the tranquil teal um, to give that a darker image. I'll come in with my microfiber cloth to wipe off from the where it's embossed with the white so that that really pops out and, and ink doesn't get on my recipient's fingers. Just say. I'm going to use my Tombow Mono Glue for the top. When I make tags, I double layer them. They could, they could be cards. Um, and I like making big tags for whether it's a gift or a card, you know, you kind of can combine it. You don't have to have a card on the gift when you have a tag because you can write your message right in the tag if it's large. <laughs> at least that's how I look at it. <laughs> okay, we must save time. <laughs> save the time in the wrapping. I hate wrapping. <laughs> but I will put a lot of effort into my tags and cards. <laughs> I know there's others out there that do that. Don't, don't judge. So for the tops, I love adding multiple strands of ribbon and twine and string when it comes to the tops of my tags. Now you can see here, I've got some silver, I've got some ivory organza, and I have some twine. So I'm going to use those three for the top of my tag. What I've been doing recently, actually too, I usually cut the tops of the tag. So it looks like it's a big tassel coming off the top. Um, the more the better for me. I don't like just putting one ribbon Again, it's just personal preference. Um, I'm finding that I like to have those loops, you know, have this, the straight edges, the ends coming off, but then keeping those loops in there. So I've been finding I've been doing that. I keep opening the tag, and you can see that that fold allows it to open. The reason why I keep opening that is something's missing. I just keep looking, you know, I have the two and the from down below. Um, I have room to write my message, you know, to have a Merry Christmas and so forth. And here I've stamped Merry Christmas or Christmas wishes, I apologize, and I'm using the Recollections Silver. I am going to heat set that and you'll see that it's a beautiful image. I don't know if it's because it's metallic or what, but I just do have luck with them and they're at a great price point. Um, I love it when they do their BOGO, buy one, get one, because then you can really save. So you can see I use that just for you, and I just put that in there. Now again, try to do your stamping before you get your tassels on, because yeah, it makes it bumpy. But again, it's a handmade tag. It's okay. My saying is, let it go. I don't sing it, but you can. Um, you know, again, it is. It's handmade, um, and those little what if you call them mistakes or accents or or accidents or or imperfections they add to what you're creating it makes it unique look at it that way i cut down those strips and i've used my um, double-sided foam tape and i trimmed and i just have that on the bottom i am still able to write my message around um, the just for you stamp that i put inside so as you can see, we're going to make more tags. Again, I dug into my stash for some craft cardstock. You can see I have two of the medium and meaning four of the medium because two will be combined and I have four of the smallest tag. I also used the three snowflake dies and I cut those out of white cardstock. All three of them are cut from white cardstock. I have created my hinge on two of the medium sized tags and I'm going to do my stamping so you can see my to and from and a gift just for you. I love that font that she puts on those. It's, I think it's like her signature font. It's, it's just gorgeous. I'm using now the snowflake, the small ones, 
the small snowflake stamps and I pulled out my clear ink and I'm just stamping on the outside of the medium tag all over. One of the things that I think is a great combination um, are the different metallics. Now I'm pulling, I'm actually using my gold recollections embossing powder for this. Um, I love the look of gold and white, but even if you did a mixture of silver and gold, um, if you, you could cut those snowflakes out of silver paper, I think it adds a level of elegance um, and just makes it stand out a little bit more. I'm going to heat set all of the snowflakes. Now you could use inks as well. I just wanted to add that metallic feel and there's a reason I'm actually going to pull out my brads. Um, you know, between brads and embossing folders, I think it's a, it's an item that's missed in our paper crafting card making world. And they give so much and they're at great price points. So I will be pulling out my brads. Now here I'm laying my two tags together, um, which means it will create that hinge that hinge effect. So again, they could be stand, they could be, you know, stood up. I do put a lot into my tags, um, even if it's a quick result, because tags can make beautiful ornaments. Um, you know, things, things have been going on, so I really haven't been putting up my Christmas decorations. I'm going to give it a good effort this year. Um, there's actually a box full of tags that I have um, for a, a small tree that I have and it's, it's absolutely gorgeous. So I do look at them as ornaments. I've taken these three layers of, of the snowflakes, layered them together, but only put glue in the center because they'll fan up. So I'll get that dimension. I've taken two of the small tags and I've punctured a hole so that my brad can go through. The brad that I have is like an antique gold. Um, so that's why I did go with the gold embossing. It would just accent it just a little bit. Now on the other side of this small tag, you're going to see the brad prongs that I'm separating. You could leave it like that by all means. I am going to glue the other small tag that I die cut just so that I can cover that up. Now the beauty of this tag, remember everything is stamped in the medium size where it says two, where it says, you know, a gift for you. So, or just for you, I'm sorry. Um, these don't have anything. So the beauty of these, I'm putting these on top of the other one. The recipient is at, can actually take the tassel off because I don't glue those on and they could use it as a tag. They could forward the tag use if they wanted to by just putting two tags together and something just you know I think about me um, every year <clears throat> excuse me for um, Christmas my sister gets a very huge box of all of these tags that I make out through the year she looks for it so I've gotten her used to that um, so she looks forward to all of these tag. So that's why I try to make multiples when it comes to this, because I try to keep one for myself again for that tree that I have. Um, again, anything can be an ornament. Um, you could have a tree of the cards that you're making for Christmas cards. Why not? Um, you can make a tree out of the cards you receive from people. You know, why not? Simple ways to decorate are what great is what's great. Okay. So you saw, I put the tag on top of that. Again, I have two of those. Now what I'm going to work on, I took a, the panel from the darker teal. And again, just like that beautiful flourish design that we used for the first tags, there is a border strip part of the stamp set. So I'm using my clear ink for that. And that would just be beautiful. If you just kept it that way and used clear embossing powder. I kind of wish I did. 
as I'm looking at this, even with the sentiment. Now, the sentiment that I'm using for this is Happy Hanukkah. Um, it's one thing that I enjoy also with her kits. She does add that sentiment when she has her Christmas kits come out. I'm using the silver embossing powder. I really do wish I went with the clear. Um, I really do like that darkness because when you use your clear ink, it will, it creates a tone on tone effect on your cardstock. Don't get me wrong. I do like the silver. Um, I think it adds a level of elegance when it comes to this card um, and adds automatically that shimmer. But again, with that border, it creates a card that's simple and elegant in no time. So if you're looking to mass produce, this is definitely it. One of the things that I also saw when it came to this kit was tone on tone. So you can see that I've pulled in a piece of silver metallic cardstock, a satin metallic from my stash, cut that out for my mat in the back. So I've got the silver embossing powder and I have the silver mat that's part of the card. It, for some reason, it was just something that I saw when I opened this kit. I'm adding some glue dots um, or, you know, drops of glue um, across my card because I'm going to add some pearls. These are eggshell. I believe they are by Pretty Pink Posh. So I'll have them linked down below. And I'm just using um, my jewel picker and I am adding them to the front of my card. All different sizes. That's what's great with this collection. And I'm also adding them in certain areas when it comes to that border strip design, just to accent the flower ends um, of the motifs that's going on there. And that is that card. So keeping the idea of tone on tone. Now, again, you're going, if you guys have seen my video before, you know I do things backwards, right? I'm just saying. So I'm going to stamp my sentiment. It's going to be Merry Christmas. Again, love the font. I have that down in the bottom right hand corner. This card panel, just like the previous, was cut to be four, and a, four by five and a quarter because I am going to have a red mirror mat behind it. Again, tone on tone. I finally got to play and you can see, so I get a lot of questions. Do I plan my cards out? Do I do, you know, any thought process? Eight out of 10? No, I do not. I usually just look at the stamp and say, okay, this is what I'm going to do two minutes before I turn on my video and start recording. <clears throat> when I have a kit, and I'm doing a five card one kit. I do plan them out on pieces of scratch paper. And you can see that right above there. So kind of, you can see, I was going to say, okay, a little partial of this stencil was going to go across. I finally got to play with Gina, with uh, Gina's um, Glitz Glitter Gel. Love it. I absolutely love it. It's very um, flowy. <laughs> Again, it's a technical term. Um, I really like the way this moves. It's very light. Now, again, I was only going to come in on one side. You can see that on that piece of paper up there. Kind of give it a, an edgy feel. Yeah, that didn't work. Um, because I wasn't liking it. Because this is a beautiful design. And I wanted that design. I didn't want to cut anything off. And if I did, it was going to drive me crazy. Just saying. So I went over... <laughs> Entire panel, which I love. And I started out by using a, an extremely damp baby cloth, baby wipe. Here's what I found to work a lot better, my palette knife. I'm able to take my palette knife and just clean right off the top of that sentiment in no time. Um, this was very simple um, to do. And it took no time at all. So <coughs> that was very easy to clean off. This did not take long to dry because I put a very thin layer 
on this, but I'm still, you know, being careful, not pressing down too much. There is my red mirror card stock. That is by Tonic. Um, I do love their specialty papers, whether it's the satin, the mirror, or those textured papers. Totally in love. But you can see I've got this tone on tone. The color of that glitter glitz is um, red velvet. I've set up that frame, and I'm going to put that down onto my standard A2 size card base. And that is our card. I don't think that it needs anything else. And I like the way the sentiment is popping out through that. It's different. And I'm sure there is another way to do that. More than likely, somebody's going to say mask. I know. Um, but I like the fact that some of the glitter paste is in between the letters as well. So, you know, I kind of like that. All right. So our next card. So we also have... Um, uh, green cardstock. I I don't know. I can't. I did not write down the colors, but I'll have them listed below. <laughs> so I'm stamping one of the tree image again. These beautiful flourish designs are throughout this um, sparkle and shine card kit, and I love that. It's different. It's unique. You know, it's not your typical Christmas or holiday card kit. So with these images, um, you can you can use them for other things. Now with that stamp set, you have a tree shape, you have an ornament shape, and then you also have like a snowflake or it could be a star shape. I'm using her rose gold embossing powder. Now what I do like about her rose gold there is definitely a pink tone with it. So I thought this pinky metallic, pinky gold metallic going on here onto that green would be absolutely beautiful. I framed it in a green foiled cardstock by Tonic, and I used the same embossing for the sentiment strip of Christmas wishes. Now, there's also holiday wishes, merry and bright, and season's greeting within that, um, within that stamp set. I am using my foam, my fun foam to prop these up, and my two inch film tape that I get from Uline. Now, again, that tape is awesome. I am a huge fan of it, but it is not forgiving. The only time I use that tape is to adhere my fun foam to my design panel and my card base, and if I've watercolored on one of my watercolor cards, because it can warp, it will warp. Um, so, if I use that design watercolor panel, putting that on a card base, it helps to flatten that out because it is so strong. But it is not forgiving. The moment you touch something, it sticks. Very sticky. I've set my sentiment right into the center of that. And again, you get the two different looks from the embossing powder of that. So those are the five projects. Two were tag designs and three were cards. Having a monochrome, a tone-on-tone -tone effect theme throughout. I do hope you enjoyed them. Um, and again, this is the Sparkle and Shine card kit. I will make sure that it is linked below as long as it is still available. But I do believe with her kits, you are able to buy the stamp sets and, of course, the card stock separately. And if so, and if the kit's not available, I'll have them listed. If you have any questions, make sure you leave those down below, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. I hope everyone is enjoying having fun getting ready for our holiday season. It is fast approaching with Thanksgiving um, first, and then with Hanukkah and Kwanzaa and Christmas. All of them are coming up, but please remember to stay safe and healthy as we continue through our journey. I hope everyone continues to always be creative. Till next time, guys.